Hello, in this video I'm gonna walk you through the financial model Excel template. I will show you the main inputs, the core outputs, reports and charts. So let's get started. You can set up core revenue drivers and see core financials and charts related to your business. So let's start with core inputs. Let's pretend you have seven working days for your business per week. This means that count of working days per year will be 164. Also you can change the number of weekends and holidays per year. Let's pretend this is 100. So count of midweeks per year is 264. A bit below you may set up average sales per day for midweek and weekends and holidays. Let's pretend on midweek you will sell $3,000 per day with growth of $100 per year. And in week weekends and holidays you will sell $5,000 per day on average with $200 growth per year. Once we change it, these assumptions, you can see that this revenue breakdown is immediately changed. It will show you the revenue breakdown by years between midweek revenue and weekends and holidays revenue. Obviously, each of your product category will have different margin. So for these purposes, you have sales mix by product categories, up to five product categories. In this particular example, we have food, beverage and three placeholders. Uh, the amount of breakdown should be always 100%. If you will set up something wrong, for example, like this, so the last row will show minus 55% and it has red color. This means something wrong here. If everything fine, it should be just gray cells. And this contains formula, which is 100% minus the breakdown of other four categories. Also below you can set up COX for each of these product categories. Also this is broken down by years. Additionally, on the revenue tab, you may see the main outputs, which is midweek and weekends and holidays revenue, average revenue per day. You may set up sales seasonality across the year by months. So 30% means that in January you'll have 130% Revenue sales efficient. In February it will be 80%. In March 100%. So below you may find the average sales per day, which you set up on the dashboard. So this is broken down by midweek, broken down by months, years. We have weekends and holidays sales, and total sales per day, in average by months and by years. Once you set up all the wages, expenses, debts and other assumptions related to the model, you may see the profitability output, which consists of revenue, EBDA and EBDA percentage. You may see the core financials on the dashboard, cash flow breakdown by operating, investing, financing and net cash flow and cumulative cash flow. Also this is broken down by years. And broken down by main cash flow streams operating cash receipts operating cash payments investing cash flow financing cash flow and the cash balance the reporting section of the model consists income statement cash flow and balance sheet broken down by months Income statement, you may see your revenue, cost of goods sold, margin, all the expenses types, depreciation, interest expense, tax expense, and net profit after tax. On the cash flow, you may see breakdown of your cash flow by operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. 
there is more collapsed form of the cash flow, which is calculated using indirect method. And there is a balance sheet where you may see your cash, current assets, non-current assets, current liabilities, non-current liabilities, and equity, also broken down by months. consist information about income statement, cash flow and balance sheet broken down by years. These are nice charts. Additionally, you are able to select detailed year on the top of the summary and you may see this information broken down by months for this specific year and you may see the chart with the main KPIs for each of the statements. You may see the revenue summary for the main revenue streams broken down by years as an absolute values and as a percentage breakdown. The same information is reported in here on the charts. Also you are able to select specific year and to see the monthly run rate and revenue depth for these revenue streams. On the bottom of top revenue report you may see the revenue bridge and you may see the total revenue for the starting year and for the ending year which you may play using these setups and you may see the factors of growth of this revenue broken down by revenue streams the same idea is used on the top expenses step you may see top four expenses streams and all other expenses collapsed in one line also, this is broken down by absolute values and percentage breakdown. The same information you may find on the charts. Also, expenses depths, monthly and rate, is ability to change the year and expenses breach with factors of expenses growth from one year to another year. Additionally, there is a valuation tab when you can set up your cost of equity, you may see the calculation of unlevered free cash flow and you may set up the valuation method which can be a VGA multiple or a revenue multiple. And you can set up the multiple for this method and on the bottom you can see NPV based on the year 5 of the model and multiplicator evaluation. The break-even analysis tab, you may see the calculation of revenue break-even level by years, you may see the actual revenue and net profit after tax also based on the revenue drivers and expenses drivers. As, you, as we may see on this chart, in each year we have calculated revenue which is bigger than revenue break-even level. This means that business in this case is profitable. The financial charts on the top we can see the revenue breakdown charts for the two years by months and for the five years by months. It is broken down by main revenue streams, which are midweek sales and holiday sales. Second pair of charts on this tab consists revenue breakdown by products, which is food, beverage and other placeholders. Also by months for two years and for the five years. Operating cash inflow and outflow breakdown, cash balance, EBDA broken down by revenue, COX and OPEX, and as a yellow line you may see the EBDA amount, and EBIT also by months for the two years and for the five years. The operational charts you may see productivity KPIs on the top which is average revenue per day and average OPEX per day and workforce productivity KPIs which is revenue per employee and OPEX per, per employee also by months for the two years and for the five years. The last reporting tab within this model consists 
the main benchmarks for this industry, which are gross margin, profit margin, wages as a percentage of revenue, average weekly revenue, and average weekly net profit. In each tab, you may see industry benchmarks as orange columns and blue columns are values calculated by the model. Also, you may change the industry KPI or benchmark which works for your country or for your industry. For example, gross margin can be changed from 65% to 50%. And you may see how this impact this chart. So in comparison to the values calculated within the model, we have an around 69% of, of gross margin and 50% of gross margin in this industry. The color coding in the model is very simple. You may change any yellow cell in any yellow sheet within the model. This means that this yellow cell has some input, assumption or driver which impacts the calculation within the model. Blue sheets means that on these sheets there are some charts, reports and other information which can be useful for reporting purposes. On the tabs without color we have some extra calculations related to revenue, to debts, equity, inventory and everything which is needed for the report, reporting. Additionally, you have contents tab, which allow you to navigate across the model very simple. So you may click on any report and you can go back. It is broken down by reports, assumptions, statements and setup. There is short explanation about what each tab does, but if you want to know more, you can go to how to and to see more detailed, ex detailed explanation of what each tab does and what inputs you may find on this sheet and what kind of outputs you may find on, th on this sheet as well. Any header of this section is also clickable. So you may click on, for example, book assets and you go directly to this tab. On the wages tab, you can input your headcount by categories with hire and fire date, with annual salary, with ability to input different number of employees by years, with annual salary rise percentage, with monthly bonus and tax rate. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let it be CFO, which you are going to hire in March 20. You are not going to fire him, so the fire date will be December 24. So annual salary can be $50,000 and this will be one CFO over the time. So you may see one CFO, which is one headcount starting from March till the end of the model, which is December 24. Also you can input 5% of salary growth rate. You may see the amounts by years connected to this annual salary and impacted by annual salary rise. Let's set up 10% monthly bonus and 5% of tax rate. So you may see below the calculation of salary broken down by months, monthly bonus which is 10% and 5% of monthly taxes related to the payroll. Another option to be admin Account, which will start in April, which will grow till the end of the model with annual salary of $30,000. Let it be in year number 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 headcounts. Three percentage of annual salary grows, 5% of monthly bonus, and 5% of payroll tax rate. So in here you may see total staff numbers, which is 2 for the year number 1, 2020. Starting from year 2021 you have 4, then 6, 8 and 10 in the last year of the model. Again, calculation of salaries for these 2, in this case 4, that counts, calculation of bonuses and calculation of monthly base taxes. You may see an income statement, 
total salaries and wages. And here you may see the total amount of bonuses, payroll taxes and wages for these headcounts. On the fixed expenses tab, you may input up to 15 line items for your fixed expenses. Let me show you how it works. For example, we have utilities. You will start pay starting from March 20 till the end of the model, which is December 24. You may see it here. Let's pretend periodicity will be daily with the amount of $50 per day. So you may see this amount in here. It is calculated based on count of days within this month. So obviously in March 20 you have 31 days. That's why you will have 1550. In April you have 30 days. This means this will be $1500. Also you have ability to input some growth rate year over year. Once you input this growth rate, you will see that your utilities will grow over year over year. Let me give you a couple of other expenses types. For example, advertising. Let it start in March and finish in August 24. This will be on weekly basis with amount of $100 without any growth. So start, starting from March till August 24, you have $400 per month, which is four weekly payments each month. And that's it. Another option is B-weekly, for example, $500. You can start from July, for example, and you'll have two payments, which is two be weekly payments within the months, $500 multiplied by 2, you have $1,000 per month. Again, you can input some growth rate and you will see that your advertising expenses will grow year over year till the August 24, which is the last date of this expense type. Another option, office setup, which can be one time payment, which will happen in February 20, with an amount of $5,000. Obviously, you should not input any gross rates, because this is just one-time fee, and you may see that office setup will happen in February 20, with this amount. Another option, insurance, let it be start from January 20 till the end of the model, and it can happen monthly, with $1,000 per month. With 5% of growth first year, 3% of growth second year, 2% of growth third, and 1% year number four. So you may see this calculation here. Starting from January 21, it will grow for 5%, which is $50. And starting from January 22, it will grow for 3%, which is additionally $32. Another option, quarterly. You may see that insurance will be paid $1,000 each quarter. You can start it, for example, from February, and this will be shifted to one month forward. Another option, semi-annually. In this case, you will have insurance payments once per half a year, again, with a percentage of growth. And the last option is annual payments or yearly payments. You'll pay one time per 12 months starting from February till December 24. For each expense type, you can use growth rate and the calculation you may see in here. Also, in income statement, you may find total fixed expenses group. If you will ungroup this section, you can see these amounts broken down by months and by fixed expenses line items. On the variable expenses tab, you can input your variable expenses as a percentage of total revenue. Let me show you how it works. For example, bank fees. And your bank fees is 2.5% of your 
revenue. So in the same way as your revenue grows over time, you may see that bank fees will grow as a percentage of this total revenue. The same way you can input other variable expenses, like for example 5% direct labor, like 15% of total revenue, and below you may see the calculation of these variable expenses by months. So these expenses will be connected to the income statement tab, section variable expenses, and you may see these line items by months and break, broken down by expenses types. You may input up to 20 development expenses categories. Let me give you a couple of real examples. For example, this will be kitchen and other development expenses. You can input purchase date for each category, for example, February and March. You can input spending, $50,000, $10,000, for example. You can also use payment delay feature, which means that if you will sell it for the kitchen two months, you will pay in April for the kitchen and, for example, three months for other development expenses, which means that you will pay for it in June 20. The total amount of development expenses connected to the assets tab. You may see it here. By default, the useful time for development capex is five years. So you may see the calculation of depreciation and closing netbook value. You are also able to input up to six other assets, for example, other capex with launch date, for example, June, with three years of useful time, with $5,000 cost. You may see the calculation here. So in this step, you have calculation of capital expenditure, book depreciation, and closing netbook value. The total amounts you may see in income statement tab in depreciation section. For the cash flow, you can see the fixed assets capital expenditure. And in the balance sheet, you may see fixed assets, assets closing book value, and capex prepayments in case of legal prepayment. Repay these amounts and it will pay in some months after you will have capex payable. Because we set up two and three months payment delay, you may see that we have capex payable. I can also remove here or select zero months. In this case, capex payable will be zero, but you will have just fixed assets amounts broken down by months. the capitalization table you can input different founders and investors contributions broken down by different dates of funding with different cost of share for each series and you can see the dilution of shares after each round and pre-money total equity and post-money total equity let's pretend that we have two founders founder one founder two so total amount of shares for founder one can be 10,000 for founder number two, 20,000. Let's imagine that cost of share will be $2 and the date of founding is February. This means that investment for founder one is $20,000, for founder two is $40,000. In total, they invest $60,000, which you may see here. The dilution is 34, 33 to 67 percentage of shares. So let's pretend that for series A we have one investor and the date of issuance is May. Cost per share is $5 per share and number of shares is 1000. So total amount of investment will be $5000. You may see that before the Series A total equity was $60,000, after $65,000 and Investor 1 will have 3.23 percentage of shares and the shares of Founder 1 and Founder 2 also diluted. 
32.26 and 46.52 percentage. You can also input some amounts for Series B and Series C. The same way you can set up the date, cost of share, and up to five investors is up to five placeholders for number of shares. The amounts of funding you may see in the cash flow, in the ordinary equity risings, and you may see the balance sheet, which shows you the total equity by months. Also on the top of the dashboard have debt assumptions. Let me show you how it works. So for the each debt, we are able to select the debt type. There are two debt types in the model, which is annuity and usual. Annuity means that each monthly payment, which consists your debt repayment plus interest expenses, will be equal each month. In case if you will select usual, your main debt repayments will be equal parts and interest will be just interest on the debt's closing balance. Let me give you an example how it works. So you may input an amount of the debt, the launch date, term, the 60 months, and interest can be 5%. You may also input the grant, which is just simple amount, which is paid in some specific months, and that's it. No repayments, no terms in terms of interest. So all the calculations of the debt you may see on the capital tab. Calculations for the debt number one, debt number two, debt number three, total debts with grants. These calculations impacts income statement, interest expenses, the cash flow, interest paid, debt drawdowns, debt repayments, and on the balance sheet, you have the debt closing balance. On the top of the dashboard, you have currency denomination and taxes setup. So currency inputs means that you can input all your drivers for the model using one currency. You have currency outputs. It can be the same as currency inputs and it can be different from currency inputs. So let me give an example. When you input in United States dollars, you have Euro as an output. And for this case, you can set up currency exchange rate. This is 1.2, for example. In this case, you will have in the model all your inputs in United States dollars, all your outputs in euros, and there will be conversion rate between currency inputs and currency outputs. Additionally, you have denomination, which means that you can denominate all your outputs on the reports. In this example, you have denomination is 1000, means that your outputs is denominated by 1000. You can select millions. You may see that now it is in million dollars. You can set also billions or without any denomination. Additionally, you have corporate tax setup. You can change this number and this will impact tax expenses in your income statement. I hope you enjoyed my video. Thanks for reviewing this. Uh, you can find more on my website finmodelslab.com and we'll see you later in the next videos.